Jake, great to meet you. Um, where exactly are you? Oh, thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm here on the Gym Peninsula in northwest Wales. And yeah, it's, it's quite cold here at the moment with this easterly breeze coming in. Yeah, so, same here. You've got snow. Not yet. We, we had a bit two weeks ago. There's a bit forecasted at the moment for this weekend. But because we were right, right on the coast itself, it's, it's unlikely we're going to get it this weekend. But the higher ground, potentially. And it's, it's great. You can see the this, this tops of Snowdon. That's just white at the moment, really blanketed. Oh, gorgeous. Yeah. It's, it's a bit like that down here in Land's End. Um, you know, being surrounded by water pretty well. It's, it's, it, the snow takes a lot to land here, but uh, yeah. Yeah, cold. Anyway, are you, are you still diving? No, I haven't. Um, so I was like, I don't even, I think it was actually the first of December, about the fourth, first week in December was the last time I was in the water. It's been a while, but I can't wait to go back in now. It's, it's kind of, the gear's ready, the gear's been serviced for the winter and it's, it's ready to go and get wet again. Yeah, it's, and, and with the COVID and everything, it's, <clears throat> I've hardly done any diving this last year, <clears throat> excuse me, this last year at all, been, uh, been hopeless. Looking forward to next year, or this summer. This year. Yeah, yeah this no, year. definitely. Uh, absolutely. Jake, I was just looking at um, your website, and, uh, and of course you've done films for us on Scuba Verse as well. Great yeah. stuff. Uh, I think really, it's always good to, to share the home patch, basically, and wherever else I go, it's always good to share that with the audience. Yeah, really nice stuff. And you've done quite a bit for TV as well? Yeah, so last, last year was quite a busy one for TV, both behind the camera and in front of it. Um, I was asked to do a bit for the one show about sharks in the local area um, against someone who's down on the coast with you, um, about looking at kind of showcasing as many shark species we have off the, off the coast really and yeah it was a good week it was an exciting week <laughs> yeah i saw it it was it was very nice that was with uh charles hood wasn't it doing it here yeah, it was with charles hood you, you've been to interview recently as well haven't you yeah uh, i haven't but ah, uh, but i, I do know charles he's on the list, <laughs> he's on the list. yeah no, it was good you should ask him about how that week went it was a we had a good fun doing it and things like that so it's quite nice to have two varied areas in terms of species as well but of course he's got the blues it's always a bonus when you have those yeah they're they're quite dynamic aren't they to see yeah, yeah fantastic so you're doing camera work and a bit of presenting yeah so yeah it's been been quite good it's actually it's been nice to be on both sides of it really you kind of get the feel of what it's like for both people um so apart from the tv stuff another thing we've been working on is with me and two of the friends who are videographers as well and have a passion for local marine life is we've actually in the process of now editing an online dive series where it's a four-parter where we're kind of taking the viewers on a journey from here in North Wales where I grew up down to South Wales and we've got four different sites which have been chosen because they're easy with one reason so anyone can go there and dive them um, but also because there's some really special habitats and species there that just why not showcase them as well so they're about 15 minutes each episode and we're hopefully getting them out within the next month or so and again school of us have been sharing the they shared the trailer earlier on which is really good and we're excited to release that yeah good it's been, it's been a delight to show all your stuff so for your final um programs have you got an end goal for them have you got any tv interest uh, potentially if, if things come around i'm always always keen to to share what we have here really and that's just a another way of just showing people there's actually a lot more off the UK coast <laughs> than they expect. It's not so dark and gloomy, really, as people think it is. Yeah, no, it's true. I started my career here in the UK, and, I mean, I, I just love it here. I think, uh, I think UK diving is, is so underrated. It's, exactly. it's, it's superb. And it's a it's perfect place to learn to dive, I think. Like if you if you can deal with the conditions here, where it is can it is cold. You gotta admit it is cold. But when you go over somewhere like the tropics, which was last year, it was the first time I'd actually arrived in a tropical area. It's a completely different feeling. It's a bit more relaxed being in that more crystal clear water, warmer, less gear, and things like that compared to when you start training in way in the UK, where dry suits, heavy gear, everything. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Um, yeah, basically, as you're saying, you know, if you can dive here, you can dive anywhere. 
Okay, I'm, I'm talking now to a few people in California and South Africa, and you know that they're, they're here, they're, they're in their t-shirts, just about to go for a dive off the beach, and, and I'm thinking, yeah, that sounds quite nice. But it does. Um, <laughs> it definitely does. And again, South Africa is an amazing place to go diving. For sure, it's so diverse in terms of the habitats and things found off the coast. And yeah, when I went there last year, it was oh, I just want to go back there. <laughs> Question I know that people are going to want to ask. Um, there's, there's a lot of people who would love to do underwater filming professionally and especially for TV. Any advice for them? Yeah, it's, it's quite a challenging one. I think the first one is time underwater. Just just get the time. Get get the objects as well. So if you if you because I come from a marine biologist background, so for me a lot of you see so much stuff when I'm filming uh, underwater with a camera it's really hard to focus on an object, a certain thing. So sometimes when you go into there, you have a little list and be like, okay, I want to focus today on this habitat of this species. And then when you're underwater with your cameras and it can be any camera, you don't, that's the other thing I'm going to say with like videography is start off a simple thing like a GoPro and getting these shots in there, but then focus on the subject and make sure you can frame around and get your buoyancy right as well. But then from their experience is one of the biggest things. So try and, shadow some people within the industry and try and work with those people closely because yeah even one dive with someone who's a real professional you can learn so much and that takeaway what you take away from that one individual could really change the path of your career really so networking but in the uk then the big element is you have to be mainly hsc certified so get your commercial diving ticket um is a big one if you want to work in the media industry as a diver yeah it's um absolutely uh but the one word you mentioned which is key to everything even if you're extremely good is networking it's it's getting your name there and uh meeting people is so important yeah it's really challenging and for me up here I've, there's not as many networking like the, the network's not as big up here on this almost remote part of big of wales and the Cayman peninsula compared to on the south coast where there's so many more people so many high-end videographers and professionals down there it's perfect to go networking with them so if you're in a place like that where there's quite a density of them just make the most of it so you can just double the message a lot of them are keen to, to take anyone under their wing and things like that yeah it's cha it's changed since i started because uh, i've always been down here and uh bristol was always uh, my place of work and it's not too far, but it's quite a long way to spend your evening in the pub with people and things like this. Uh, but now, of course, with internet and Zoom and everything, you can network so much easier. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's almost like, let's say for Instagram, you can drop someone a message and most of the time they're pretty happy to reply or give you some advice and things like that. And it's quite nice to see that people are keen to help the ones get in the industry and things like that. But it, it's, it's like any industry. It's very competitive at the same time. There's very few roles or paid jobs that could really get your foot in the door but it's about that networking first of all and getting that experience then what was your first break what was your first break into tv um it's actually uh my first bit of tv was country file <laughs> ah, uh, great. so i was it was back in 2017 um i do a lot of work with project seagrass which is a charity that um it's a global charity now it's a really big one looking at seagrass beds and trying to help raise awareness of the importance of seagrass habitats and at the moment they're doing a big restoration project but I was working with them on a local seagrass bed here in Pothnikhan and Country Fire wanted someone to take uh, one of the presenters swimming um, and show them the seagrass so I said no problem I can take you out swimming and then that was it we had, we had a good um, filming day there the biz wasn't the best but it was good but it was a nice opportunity to to see what it was like to be on the other side of a camera, basically. Um, and then from there, there's been a few opportunities being assisted, like a, um, a safety diver on different TV programs, or like, like I mentioned earlier, uh, The One Show. And then um, ITV Coast and Country has been another good one, actually. But then footage, footage-wise, I'd be fortunate some of the footage I've taken of sharks off the Welsh coast was uh, featured on Discovery Channel Shark Week, which was kind of one of those highlights so far because I never thought a little local patch could actually then be displayed on TV on one of the biggest 
weeks for sharks that are on the TV channels? I mean, that's that's the, the, the secret. The whole world is full of little local patches. So, yeah. you know, just because you, you've only got your local beach, don't ignore it. it. It could have something really good to offer. Definitely. There's so many hidden gems that you just don't know. And, you, and another one yeah. is like, you could dive the same site a hundred times. <sighs> And every time you'll see something different. And it'll, it'll just, it blows your mind, actually. Yeah. When you're, um, and you're, do you do very much planning for, for species? So if you're after a certain species or um, uh, an environment, do you actually do a lot of research and planning before you go in? Or do you go in and film what you see? Or, or do you actually search for something specific? There, there are a few species that I, I do have always have in the back of my mind. I'm like, okay, I want to go here for this one. So like, for example, up here, thornback rays or skate. Uh, they're not very common, um, but there are a few sites where I'm kind of in my mind. I'm like, okay, I know this is a good area for them. So I'm going for that. But otherwise I go in open-minded, just knowing this is a habitat, like it's a sand habitat and a kelp habitat. I know what I could see, but there's a potential of seeing this other species. So a lot of the time it is open-minded because you, don't, you can never get disappointed, but it's always good to, to go in there because it's completely changing. It's always changing in there. Yeah. With, with your um, marine biologist background, um, how do you feel about marine conservation at the moment? Uh, do you think enough is happening across the globe? It, it's, it's good that things are happening and across the globe in the bigger picture, things are definitely moving forward. And again, it's, it's kind of that social network, uh, social media part has had a big part of kind of showing people the reality of what it's like in some of the areas, a lot of areas, obviously a lot worse than others. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting because on top of like, the work I do and things and the things I share in social media, I kind of don't really get fully involved in that. I kind of go back, back a bit and kind of show people this is what it is. And kind of because a lot of people don't get to see it. So it's almost giving the people that image of what it's like and what is below the surface. And then they can then go out and do their part of research and see how they can help that area. It's almost giving that more positive message and trying to get that link between people and the environment. I think that's that's a really important part to move things forward in terms of like any conservation work because they can see it. And they, it gives them more a sense of what they want to protect or why it's important to them then. But on, on my travels, obviously, it's always good. I, I do like to go and meet the people that are doing some amazing work around the world and get involved with some projects where possible. Which is why, kind of why when I try to kind of choose places to go on holiday, it's kind of half holiday and half kind of networking, meeting people and just seeing there's some real positive stories out there as well. Yeah, in, interesting point of view. And the majority of people have no idea what the sea holds, what it should be like. Yeah. And I mean, the classic is the Attenborough series and stuff who show people what it, it, it how amazing it is, what we're losing, but we're still losing it. Yeah. And we're still losing it all at um, a horrendous rate. Uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, no, it, it's devastating. It's, it's one of those, I think, a big part is if there's a legal, the illegal trade is obviously the things that should be stopped straight away because everything goes back down to the bottom of the line in a way. And it's the sources that kind of needs to be stopped for a lot of the stuff. So like big passion of mine is like sharks. Fortunately that I get to work on sharks as well. Um, but like the finning trade is just one of the most horrendous trades and things. And there's that, that campaign going around at the moment as well about the UK actually doing, allowing a certain amount of binned, product through the UK airports, which was I didn't know until recently, which that's pretty bad. So that's one thing. Signing a petition like that could definitely help out that trade and stop that trade a bit more. But things are getting positive, like the Mako sharks recently, they've um then the announcements of those so less less of those can be caught in fishing and things like that. So there are things moving forward, but it's a very slow rate by the looks of it. But another big one I think is is fishing is is a, is a thing that I've quite hard because I come from a fishing background. My, my parents, my, my family are, are from fishing background, but very small scale local fishing, which is fine. And it needs, sometimes it needs to be distinguished between fishing and the big industrial fishing that's going on. And 
this this industrial fishing is the part that has the bigger impacts whereas more small scale fisheries are or more sustainable and more locally sourced and that's if people want to buy fish then that's the way to do it because there's less of an impact instead of these big super trawlers out there which are horrendous at, at decimating basically it's not fishing anymore it's just over exploitation of it it's quite bad yeah it's it's impossible to comprehend if you haven't seen it uh, just how gigantic the the industry it is and how destructive it is have you any desires at all to show any of this on your films or at the moment are you just happy showing people what there is around at the moment there, there are parts where I, we do touch in it in in elements of it so as part of the wales best of the west one was saying that four part is we are touching on bits of things like that for example with seagrass habitats they're, they're, they're a globally important habitat, but they are being impacted by physical impacts and pollution impacts, which are degrading, degrading the habitat. So that's brought in, um, in one of the episodes as well, we're down in South Wales and we, we talk about Neptunix Army of Rubbish Cleaners. And as part of one of our dives, we often do the cleanup dives. And some of these dives, we actually do come across a lot of lost gear from fishers and of which one of them, we have footage of this poor cat shark that's got two hooks in its mouth just entangled up in a load of um, kelp as well to rescue that one but unfortunately for another two a bit further on the story was completely different and they were just been dead for a good couple of weeks and they're deco decomposing and things so when there is the story when when we do come to it we do show it because it is equally important to show people there are effects and it's not always as nice as we like to show it <laughs> there is two sides of the story yeah, good, good. Do you ever dive without a camera? I do, and every time I do, it, the good things come out. <laughs> do you know, I, I find it absolutely impossible to get into the water without some sort of camera. It's, yeah, no, I agree. It's really frustrating. There's, there's one fish that's been on my mind all the time, which is the tub gurnard. Amazing little fish, and they're pretty unique. And I know we get them quite often here because from fishing and things like that from, from dad um, and every single time I go to the spot where they could be with a camera they're never there however the three times I've been without a camera to do a job for someone they're there and they just sat there in front of me and I, I'm just like I can't do anything about this I'm just going to enjoy this moment and hopefully next time I have the camera with me yeah <laughs> oh dear I do know that feeling uh, yeah what cameras are you using at the moment so I recently upgraded to the GH5 and it is incredible to be honest. Um, so I started off with, well, I started off with the GoPro and then I went to a RX100 uh, Mark III compact, great little camera. And then I went to an A6300, the Sony, again, a really good camera, but then just the step up on the GH5 is, is really good. I really enjoying it. I've only had it for about four months. But yeah, you can see the difference in the quality straight away. It looks like it. Yeah, it is amazing quality. And what about lighting? How are you, how are you sorting that out? So I got two, I usually just use two big blue lights, um, video lights as well. Um, I have actually thought about getting some strobes to do some more underwater photography, but I just get bogged down and just enjoying to film it in the moment instead. Yeah, it, it, it's so difficult doing the two things. I, I, I always used to get asked to put a, a still camera on top of the video housing or the film housing camera, and which I did. So I put it there on the top, so it's all framed up, same stuff, and I take a sequence, and you know I never took one still photo, ever. <laughs> it's impossible, because you're yeah. so con you're concentrating on getting this sequence, on getting the behavior. Yeah. And the mere thought of, moving your head up to, to press the button is, is just impossible. So I took it off in the end. I said, no, I can't do it. But now, of course, the quality is so amazing that you can take a perfectly good still from your video frames. Yeah, yeah, it's really good, the stills you can get. And you think they'd be quite blurred, but they're actually not too bad at all. Yeah, no, I think the quality can, can be exceptional, especially if you plan for it, you know, in your filming. Uh, and, and you manage to get a nice still subject and your lighting is good, et cetera, et cetera. So some of the photo opportunities through video, I think are amazing. 
Yeah, no, 100%. And like you said, with with video, you never know what's... The moments can happen so quick. Like, it could be... It changes so quick. So by the time you've sorted things out to get a photo of it, it completely changed again. It's like, oh, the photo moment's no longer there. It's more like the video again. Yeah, no, absolutely. Rebreathers. Uh, um, I, looking at your photos on your website, using ordinary scuba. Um, any thoughts of using rebreathers or do you? Yeah, so it's on my mind. It's kind of on that next thing that I want to do. Um, I was hoping to actually get a course done this year. Oh, well, this this kind of pre-season. It's always good to get courses done between October and April before the actual summer season starts. Um, but yeah, I was hoping to do it. And it's what me and two of the friends who are doing the, the series with me, we've all thought about it and we all want to go and do it because if we work as a, we often work as a team. So if one of us has it, then it makes sense that all three of us or two of us at least have it as a team. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking looking to get one or at least doing the course first to do it because it is a game changer for, to do any of the filming work. Yeah, I think it is. It's a thing I've never used. Uh, I, I tried them once, but uh, I've never used them professionally. But most certainly, game changer, as you say. Yeah, it's just capturing those flight, like, for one of the fish that I do like to film around here is Ras. And they, ah. again, they're so colourful. It's amazing. And people, every time you show someone that's like, nah, nah, that's not, like, especially a cook Ras, they're like, that's not the UK. Don't be silly. I'm like, no, it is. So, yeah, they're quite flighty towards the bubbles. So a rebreather would really help to get them, just draw them in that little bit more to get that nice close-up shot of one. Yeah, I noticed on one of your photos you've got a you've got a full well a half face um, uh, with a, a mic in it. Yeah, yeah. What so make is it? What make of mask is that? So that's the Ocean Technologies uh, new, newest mask video. Really. So that's the Spectrum. Um, they bore it out as a recreational full face mask, and it's actually perfect. It's so much nicer. It's, it kind of moulds your face a little bit more because the the guardians are a bit more rigid on the side. You kind of don't glue as well but this one just perfectly molds to it easy you only need your own reg so that's all you do is take the mouthpiece off put it in and you're done yeah it looks nice i'm just looking at it now and uh it's very stylish Look, looks good the reason I mentioned... added benefit <laughs> <laughs> the reason i mentioned it was with cuckoo ras i always find cuckoo ras love it when you talk if ah, okay yeah i, I, oh, I was... know that if I start talking to myself or to 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 a fish <laughs> with a, with a full face on, uh, as soon as I start talking, they get really interested. It's it's. Um, Is that the males know? more than the females as well? Males, always males. the males. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm gonna have to get going. I'm gonna have to start talking to myself more. <laughs> than I already do. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, it's been lovely um, to meet you and talking to you. Um, Good luck with your future projects, especially the stuff that you're doing in Wales. Uh, have you got a, a, a an end date for that in mind? Uh, we're hoping for well for the the online series. We're hoping to get that probably maybe the end of next month into April. We want to get it done at properly released before the season starts again. It gets people into the mood of getting into the water and get them excited to explore some of the sites, especially as they're quite easy and accessible ones for anyone. Yeah, fantastic. Well, once again, best of luck with that. And um, nice to meet you. You too. No, thank you for having me on. Cheers now. Thanks. Bye.